to all who are weary and need rest, to all who mourn and need comfort, to all who are lonely and need friendship, to all who are complacent and need disturbing, to all who sin and need a savior, to all who are called and would serve their fellow man, this church opens wide its doors and bids you welcome. Well, good morning and welcome to Rapid Ann Baptist Church here in beautiful downtown Wolftown, Virginia. It is Sunday, June the 26th, 2022. So good to have you with us this morning. Now, we always like to start out with birthdays, and I know that we have a few this week on the calendar, starting today, and that is the mayor of Doolin's Corner, Susan Burnett, has a birthday today. Congratulations, Susan. Also today, my little brother, Kevin Tucker, up at Gray's Mill, he has a birthday today. And then on the 27th, Miss Jamie, Jamie Dotson, has a birthday. Happy birthday, y'all. Now, I know within the sound of my voice there are others, so this is also for you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you and many more. Yeah, happy birthday, y'all. Now, by way of announcements, first of all, want to say that we had the most fabulous VBS week ever. Had an outstanding group of young people. Had tireless volunteers. The whole thing was overseen by an awesome God. It was a great week. And you know something? It's, it's amazing how God works because uh, we picked the theme for our uh, VBS back in March. And it was a curriculum through Answers in Genesis. And the theme was, or is, returning to the value of of life and of course we didn't know at the time that the very week that our VBS returning to the value of life was had that the Supreme Court would make their monumental decision returning to the value of life as Sergeant York used to say God works in mysterious ways now, uh, by way of announcements, we have a couple. We're gonna be starting our Kicks for Kids. Uh, I think we've adopted 20-some youngsters in need of uh, new kicks for the school year. Uh, please see DD for all the information on that. Uh, we've been participating for some years now, and uh, it's always good to have young'uns back in a new pair of shoes for the coming school year. Uh, other announcements, big doings coming up in August, August the 13th, Saturday evening out at Hoover Ridge, the first annual Youth Rally for Jesus is coming up. We're inviting all middle school and high schoolers from the whole area to come out. There are going to be games and prizes. We've got a college challenge course coming for them to run through, an adrenaline rush course also for them. We're going to put them through their paces. There'll be prizes for the winners. Then we're going to eat. We're going to feed all of these youngsters. Then we got music coming. The uh, Spirit Band Legacy Church is coming to play. And then we're going to have a special guest speaker, none other than Doc Fields. It's going to come and bring a message to the young people that evening. Oh my, it is going to be a blessed time. Please be in prayer for this event. 
that, that young people would just come out of the woodwork and come rally for Jesus. Now, uh, more information and tickets. Tickets are free. But you can get your tickets. Just go to our website, rapidambaptistchurch.org. It'll pop right up under events and uh, get your tickets for these young folks to come and rally for Jesus. Uh, that's all the announcements I can think of. Uh, do have a riddle came from uh, VBS this week. Of course, we had an Australian theme. And the riddle says, what do you call a boomerang that doesn't come back when you throw it? Any guesses? You call it broke. That's a good one. Now, in the spirit of worship, we continue in our series. What are we waiting for? Subtitle, Let My People Go. Because you see, when you think about it, every time we witness for Jesus, we're really saying to Satan, let my people go. Now, in the spirit of worship, Rapid Am Baptist Church. scripture lesson uh, this morning, we're going to start in uh, the book of Exodus, chapter 8, verse 1, real simple. And the Lord spoke to Moses, go to Pharaoh and say to him, thus says the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. From the New Testament, the book of Acts, first chapter, verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. May the Lord bless both the reading and the hearing of his holy word.
this morning will actually be the sixth lesson in our series, What Are We Waiting For? And today is subtitled, Let My People Go. Now just a quick recap reminds us that we started that with God's two-minute warning. And that was a hand written on King Belshazzar's wall. And we discovered that that warning pertained to us as well. From there, we went to the fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and learned that even when the heat was turned up, they would not bend or bow to anybody but God. Back on June 5th, Pentecost Sunday, together we celebrated the gift of the Holy Spirit's indwelling in each of us the hour that we first believed. June 12th, we dove into Romans 10, 17 and learned that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Then last week, we learned of the sin of silence and that these perilous times will not allow us to be silent anymore. Which brings us up to today, which is titled, What Are We Waiting For? Let My People Go. Now, I chose this title because when I got to thinking about it, really and truly, every time we share our faith, we're boldly saying to the devil, let my people go. Think about it. That's exactly what we're doing. Now, fully understand when tasked or actually commanded with witnessing to others, we can quickly come up with any number of excuses as to why we just not the ones for the job. Y'all just go ahead and admit it now. Just go ahead, shake your head. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know because I've been there. And let me just start out by saying, we're in some mighty fine company. Because you see, none other than Moses himself gave God just about every reason in the book for not being the right man for the job. Needless to say, it was Moses who appeared before Pharaoh and boldly demanded that he let my people go. Now, in our time together this morning, we're going to examine the lesson of how God overcame Moses' fears, how he partnered with him, and how he led him in a mighty way, and how he, God, set his people. Free. And here's the best part. He wants to do exactly the same thing with you. Are you ready? All right, here we go. First of all, Moses tells God that he just doesn't have the position or the stature to approach the all-powerful Pharaoh. Now turn with me. We'll go back to Exodus. Exodus chapter 3. We'll be in Exodus 3 and 4. Exodus, Genesis, Exodus 3. Verse 11. Moses' first excuse. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? Now today, we as Christians might say, well, a minister would be much better choice to go to my neighbor who is lost. Ministers are trained and people respect ministers. They'll believe them. Secondly, Moses tells God the people wouldn't have a way to know he was speaking for the one true God. He, like many today, stated he just didn't know enough about God to convince them. Now, verse 13, 313, Moses is laying out his case. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? Now, today, we as Christians might just say, Well, I just don't know enough about doctrine. Or oh, I don't know enough about theology, or I don't know Greek and I don't know Hebrew. So how can I be the one to explain about God to the lost? 
No, no, it should be somebody that's highly educated and deeply spiritual should go to my lost relatives. Thirdly, Moses tells God the people just won't believe him. Exodus 4.1, slip over to 4. Here comes Moses again. Then Moses answered and said, But suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, The Lord has not appeared to you. Now today, as a Christian, we might say, A lost person won't see any reason in my life to believe my witness of God's saving grace and care. Somebody who's had a miracle in their life would be the best person to witness. Fourthly, Moses tells God that because he wasn't a good speaker, he couldn't talk easily or, or say the right things. Verse 10, 410. Then Moses said to the Lord, Oh my Lord, I am not eloquent. Neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant. But I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. Now today we as Christians might very well say something similar. Well, I just don't do a good job of talking to others about God. I might say the wrong thing or I might even confuse them. Finally, Moses expressed the heart of most Christians today. Please, Lord, send somebody else. Mo uh, Exodus 4.13, but he said, Oh, my Lord, please, by the hand of whomever else you may send. Now, although other thousands of years ago, Moses' appeal to God still represents the attitudes of many Christians towards witnessing to the lost. Just as in Moses' day, we fear our witness will bring dishonor to God and, and an embarrassment to ourselves. What Moses overlooked, and unfortunately many of us overlook today, is God's promise in chapter 3, verse 12. So go back to 3. <coughs> Back to 3 and verse 12. So he, this is God, so he said, I will certainly be with you. I will certainly be with you. You see, beloved, and if you don't remember anything else that I say this morning, please latch on to this one thing. God never asked us to do anything alone. No, this partnership that God formed with Moses is the same exciting partnership he offers us today. Just imagine, isn't that the ultimate accomplishment in business today? To become a partner? Yeah. Can you just imagine how Attorney John Howe, how elated he was when he became a partner in the law firm of Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe. <laughs> Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe. Yeah. But God offers us the ultimate partnership, a partnership within with him in the life assurance business sealed with his unwavering promise I will certainly be with you in Acts 1 8 we read Jesus called to every Christian I know we've been wearing it out but listen to it again but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and in Samaria and to the end of the earth. And I'll just remind you again this week that to the ends of the earth, that includes our little corner of the world right here. Acts 1-8 is our call to that partnership so that the story of Jesus will continue to be told. Just think about it. Isn't it awesome? Jesus has chosen to work in partnership with us to be his heart, hands, and feet 
for many crucial things. Sharing the good news is one of the highest expressions of this partnership. If the things that you do are to have any lasting significance, they must be done in partnership with Christ. Now here's a side rant. Anything that you're trying to accomplish where you don't want Jesus as a partner, you may want to reconsider that. I know what you're thinking. Watch out, preacher. You're going from preaching to meddling. I'm just saying. Any endeavor that you're thinking about, that you don't want Jesus as a partner, please think again. As Jesus said in John 15, 5, you can do nothing without me. And beloved, here's the mind blow. Here's the mind blow. Balance John 15, 5 with Philippians 4, 13, where Paul writes, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now I'm here to tell you, that's an unbeatable combination. I mean, have you ever thought of witnessing as a partnership between you and Jesus Christ? And how does it make you feel to know that the Holy Spirit goes with you and empowers you for that task? It's the Holy Spirit that makes your witnessing efforts effective. It's the Holy Spirit that convicts of sin and touches the heart. Surveys have shown that the number one reason for not witnessing is the fear of rejection. Now here's a news flash for you. How does it go? <laughs> news flash. People who did not surrender their lives to Christ when you witnessed to them did not reject you. They rejected Jesus Christ. They rejected God's word. Here's another news flash. It is never about you. Never about you. If your witness to someone tomorrow that becomes a leading national evangelist, can you take credit for that? No. If someone you witness to the day after that rejects Christ, is that your fault? No. In this area of your life, you can't take credit for the victories or the rejections. The truth is, God doesn't ask you to cause the salvation of a person's soul. Sharing your faith doesn't actually mean that you bring someone to the Lord. God is the one who takes these actions. Beloved, beloved listen up now. I know this is the second time I've asked you to do this. <laughs> but if you don't catch anything else I say this morning, please get a handle on this. Witnessing is one area of your Christian life where you cannot, I repeat, cannot fail. What are you talking about, preacher man? What do, what do you mean I, I, I can't fail? Well, I'm so glad you asked because I simply mean this. Even if your voice trembles, even if your hands are, are shaking, even if you stumble over your words, even if you struggle to make your witness clear, and even if your timing is awful, God can, I repeat, God can use your witness. God, however, cannot, and I repeat, cannot use your silence. Beloved, whenever we give in to the fear of rejection or the fear of not knowing enough or we give in to the fear of offending somebody or we give in to the fear of ridicule or, or persecution, we practice the sin of silence. And we give up the opportunity to boldly say to Satan, let my people go. Beloved, you don't have to be afraid. 
Resist the temptation to count only your weaknesses and believe that they are unchangeable. Honestly share your fears of witnessing with the Lord in prayer. Focus your heart on the strength that matters, the presence of God, and the assurance of His power. After years of experiencing God's care while facing the threats of enemies and in the trials of life, David wrote a psalm of praise. Now, I know you're going to want to turn to the psalms, but in this case, we're going to turn to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel. Go from Exodus. Genesis, Exodus. Second Samuel, 22. This is something. Second Samuel, 22. Verse 29. Could really use the whole thing, but we, we're going to do 20, start at 29. Listen now. For you are my lamp, O Lord. The Lord shall enlighten my darkness. For by you I can run against the truth. By my God I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? God is my strength and power, and he makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of deer and sets me on my high places. You see, beloved, as a young shepherd boy, many years before he sang this song of praise, David saw the soldiers of King Saul running in fear, being humiliated, by the giant Goliath. David said to King Saul, don't let anyone be discouraged by him. Your servant will go and fight this Philistine. But Saul didn't hesitate to point out all the reasons why David should fear the giant. Just like friends and family are gonna, will not fail to point out all the reasons why you shouldn't be a witnessing to anybody. They'll come up with all of them. And Saul was coming up with the reasons why he, he, don't fool with this giant. You're just a kid and, and he's been a warrior all his life. But David told Saul how the Lord was with him when bears and lions had attacked his sheep and that he would rescue him from the hand of the giant. You see, David recognized that his success lay not in his own power, but in the power of God. He faced a giant with all that God had provided for him. He announced to the world that though Goliath was coming against him with a dagger and a spear and a sword, David was coming in the name of the Lord. Beloved, no for sure as you head out to the witness field you can go without fear knowing that you go in the same strong name the name of our partner the Lord Almighty as we declare to Satan loudly and clearly let my people go let's say that together Satan let my people go. One more time. Satan, let my people go. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Woo. Lord, time is short. It's time to be bold. Dear Lord, and we can be bold. Help us to always remember that you're with us every step of the way. Dear Lord, we can't do it without you. Don't want to try and we are just admitting, we're confessing, we are proclaiming right here and now that 
that you are Lord through your power and the power of the Holy Spirit, we can indeed express our faith to others. Dear Lord, we can stand up against Satan and say, let my people go through the power of Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, give us that backbone that we need to do just that. Dear Lord, we, we know it's getting fairly obvious that, that times are Oh, indeed, getting short. People ask me, well, what can you do? Well, the thing to do is be prepared. Be ready. Be ready for the time either he takes us home or he comes back. We must be prepared. But dear Lord, in the meantime, help us to prepare others by sharing our faith just how much you love us, what you did for us, for each and every one of us. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you in the name above all other names, Jesus Christ, and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to go to 177. Here's what you need to know. Next weekend, we're going to be celebrating the freedom of our nation, right? Independence. Independence Day. Next week, I'm going to bring to you a very simple way to share freedom with your lost friends. So please be here. The ultimate freedom that comes in Jesus Christ. He tells us clearly in John that you uh, shall know the truth, and the truth shall do what? Set you free. I want to thank you again for joining us here this morning. Always appreciate it when you take the time to do so. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you, and give you peace. The peace that passes all understanding through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in his name we pray. All God's children say, Amen. Savior Jesus